Not all at once. Uh, last time we played Maryland, they switched their defenses in the half court mm -hmm. and all that. How much, how yeah, much trouble did that give you? And they just, didn't switch their defenses. They they, they go into like a, a press or a run and jump press or a zone press back into like where they just match to you. And then after a second, third, fourth pass or a time, whatever they do, they go to a man. So that's just what they do. Mm -hmm. So they didn't do anything different to us than they do to any other team or any other thing. That's just how he plays and just trying to get you in between. How big of a key will that be Thursday to handle that again? Well, it's the key. You know, it's what they do. So, like, you got to be able to attack it and, and – um, you know, get a quality shot. I think the start of the second half, like some of the shots we took and some of the turnovers that we had, like those had to be fundamentally sound. And that's where we've been in the season. Like <clears throat> when we've taken care of the basketball, we've won. A lot of times there's other factors that go into it, but when you only have three losses. But when we struggle like in a half, like we did in the second half of that game, um, it's hard to put a finger on where it is. I can only put it, I, I put it on us more than anything because Sometimes people pressure, sometimes people don't, and we've turned it over against both, and we've had success against both. So it's not like anybody that's came and really pressured us hard. We've had no success against. We've had success against both, but we've had some failure against both. But just taking care of the basketball, no matter what our opponent does, if we can do that, we've been such a good rebounding team, and we can shoot the ball well, even though we've had some balls. That really is the recipe for us. We just can't have empty possessions where the other team's constantly playing in transition. If we do, we're going to end up having the same results. Right. Is that is that the message to this group? Just be fundamentally sound. Yeah, more or less, because you know there's a lot of different scenarios that come with some of those turnovers. You know, sometimes they're out of the post, sometimes they're through ball screens, sometimes it's just you know passing against a press or having an initiative against the press. Um, but yeah, more more than anything, just being fundamentally sound and um, giving ourselves a chance to win the game. If we give ourselves a chance, you know, we're going to have success. I mean, we've proven that. Uh, but we, we can't go in the other direction or keep going in that same direction, I should say. Now, what's been the struggle with putting two halves together in, in the same game? I mean, th there's been some recent games where you look like two different teams out there. Yeah, turning the basketball over. That's, that's, that's the issue. If we don't turn the basketball over, we're going to have success. And I think that's the important piece. Got to have everybody connected defensively. Um, you know, Ethan Morton has done some really good things for us, but he can't guard Chase Audij and Boo Booey. You know, and so like we put him on Chase Audij, Boo Booey gets going. Put him on Boo Booey, he does some good things against him, Chase Audij gets going. You know, we got to have, from our team standpoint, you know, we got to be more connected defensively and do a better job on guys. With Maryland having so many interchangeable pieces, how do you ensure that one guy doesn't have a career night against him? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. It's easier said than done. Um, it's not something you can say as a coach. There's a lot of things that don't work with him for the speech. Um, so, like, you just like, hey, don't turn it over. You know, so, like, hey, we're good. Coach told him to turn it over, so now we're not going to turn it over. Um, that's what having depth and having balance, that, that becomes an issue. And, and so, like, they have different guys that have stepped up. Like, Kerry has stepped up and had huge games. You know, Akeem Hart, Dante Scott, obviously Jameer Young's our leading scorer, Reese. So they got a really good starting five. And Martinez has really given them um, some good minutes. So they have one of those teams that has a lot of different guys. You know, we have three different guys that have scored 24, 29, 35 coming off our bench. So people look at, you know, you kind of the same way because you have some people that are you know, dangerous, and, and I think that's the key, just having that connectivity defensively and everybody being on the same page gives you the best chance to stop everybody. And then defensively, Maryland held everybody to single digits except for Evie last time out. How do you kind of work on those guys to be more productive on offense? Make them. When you're open, make your shots. Yeah. And so when you deal with Zach Eady, if you can pass and move the basketball, you are going to be open. That's been proven. And then you got to be able to step up and knock those shots down. I know that sounds like it's a – kind of a, a simple answer, but when you get good looks at the basket, like, you know, we have too good of shooters not to be able to step up and, and knock some of those downs. And so that's that's what we have to be able to do. Um, just have that balance, but also take what they give you. Like sometimes they're gonna take him away totally, but it's gonna open up things for others. Sometimes they're gonna let him play one on one, and if that's the case, we're gonna go to him as much as we can. It looked like there was some uh, arm locking going on against Zach at the, yes. at the foul line. I'd imagine yep. that's not. No, legal. it's a it's illegal to arm lock and come together like if you're set like a double screen, that's illegal right there. It's illegal for them to come at the free throw line and arm lock, especially when he's in between it. 
Like, so, like, if I arm lock with you and I come set up ball screen, it's totally illegal, but we got nobody in between us besides us, even though it's illegal. Now he comes and arm locks him while he's at the free throw line. It's dangerous is what it is because somebody can really get hurt that way because you can get locked in that way, and then you get turned and twisted. You could, like, separate somebody's shoulder, you know, crack their elbow, things of that nature. So the officials have to do a better job. They have to do a better job. We had an official that refused to go to the monitor on the hook and hold, which was totally egregious. And, you know, that's our right. You know, they put that rule in on the hook and hold because of what they did to us in the NCAA tournament with Isaac Haas. It's our rule. Now we got the biggest dude on the block, and they're doing stuff of that nature to him, and we got officials that are ignoring hook and holds, which is just a total safety issue. Now they're grabbing us at the free throw line and pulling and doing that, and they're not doing it to, to everybody on our team. They're doing it to one person on our team, and we got guys officiating things that are just have no clue about what's going on around them and their safety issues. And uh, it's just unfortunate that we've gotten here in the middle of February and we're dealing with this stuff. Uh, so, go, ahead, go ahead. Coach, um, the two freshman guys you've had, um, they've been featured in your offense since day one. They're mm -hmm. negative. You were telling us how good they were before the season started. In recent games, they've been under a lot of pressure lately, and mm -hmm. um, other teams have been able to capitalize off of that. Right. How much of that has been simply there being more film on them, teams knowing how to prep for them, right. versus them finally just almost showing signs of being freshmen or yeah. something else entirely not even being them? Yeah. No, I, I think they just got to be stronger with the basketball and make better decisions. You know, Braden gets into some binds. He does a lot of good work jumping up in the air, but in crucial situations, he's got to be able to either keep his dribble alive or stay on his feet just to secure possessions. And so he's got to learn from that. Um, and be better, but he does a lot of really good things that way. Fletch has just got to be aggressive um, and uh, you know keep looking for a shot and, and be strong. But you know pressure is something you feel when you're not prepared. Like both of them are prepared. They played 25 games. Um, they're both from basketball backgrounds, so they uh, they'll be fine. Just like early in the year, and people were like talking about our inability to shoot the basketball, and so like I'm not gonna sit there and let a bunch of bad shooters take shots. Like it's just. It's not something you would do. Um, but like, I also got to understand the game. Some people don't understand the game. Good shooters are going to go through some tough times, and what they need from their coach is support. What they need is that somebody believes in them. And I believe in guys that can shoot. Like We had guys in the game the other night have wide open shots that can, that can shoot the basketball. They didn't go down. But I just think a lot of makes are coming our way. Is there a lot of difference when you go to use a different brand of basketball and things like that that maybe you do have to get adjusted to, to the way to shoot, you know, an Under Armour ball yeah. versus a... Yeah, but we, we have them all. So everybody that we play, we, we go and buy those basketballs. So we practice for those days, two, three days before it with those basketballs. So they're all round. We'll be fine. <laughs> Good just, shooters can make it with a football. Uh, just, so. the way, just the way Northwestern was able to guard Zach, obviously yeah. it really affected his ability to, to pass out of the post, yeah. I guess. Um, just what you saw in film after being able to look at it, what's going to kind of help him either get that position to be able to yeah. see guys on the court or, well, from, or go fast and Yeah, from shot. his standpoint, like when he's on that right block, he's got to open up so he sees it. When he passes across his body that way, you know, you're not going to have success. And so we really work on that right block opening up. From the other side, they, you know, they got to call the fouls. You know, they can't come in there and jump into him and hatch at him. And it was just poor officiating late in the game. I thought Northwestern did a fabulous job in the first half of their doubles being legal, guarding them, I and they, they did a really, really good job. And as the game progressed, they the, the refs you know swallowed their whistles, and now we have to be stronger at those times. So we, we still have a hand in that, even then, and that's what we talk about in practice. Even though they foul us, even though they do those things, we can still take care of the basketball and not lose possession. Maybe it's not efficient at that time when they foul us, but you know you got to be strong. And so I, I, I feel for them because I don't think there's anybody on our team that has a complaint with other, with the officials. Not one person except him. Like how they've officiating and, and how they go into games and, and don't understand what's going on is, is really tough to take from his standpoint. Now, nobody else on our team can, can say that. You know, they might get a bad call here and there, and that's just part of it. But they they got to do a better job. It, it's been ridiculous what's happened in our last two road games. Um, well, all the minutes that the freshman guards have played this season, all the contact mm -hmm. Zach's taken all season. This being back half the Big Ten schedule now, do you have to manage things at all in terms of your minutes or their practice time or whatever? Uh, not really, no. not really. Yeah, it's you know we manage things through practice, we manage things through days off. So we take Monday off. You know, you you practice here the last two days. You're not going that long. Um, it, it's more of a concentration and just a focus and just kind of having that mental toughness 
to be able to go through. You know, you can't get into college and want an opportunity and then get an opportunity and say, I'm tired. It's just not the way it works. Like, you know, you work hard right here. Guess what? Everybody's tired. Everybody's fatigued. Everybody's injured. Like, there's a lot of common, you know, ground there for, for everybody. So you're, even though those things might hold true, they're true for everybody. So who has the advantage? Like, no one has the advantage. The people that fight through and have the mental toughness, you know, especially if you have a good team, they're the ones that end up being successful. Go ahead. Uh, beginning of the season, obviously a lot of success managing, you know, not getting too high. After two losses in three games, mm -hmm. do you feel like you have to pick them back up a little bit? or they Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Like, you got to be on edge, but you also got to feel good about yourself. Yeah. Don't, uh, what do they say about the linemen? Don't feed sugar to mules. You know, you don't yell at the running back because he can fumble. Um, but you can yell at the right guard because he never touches the football. Um, well, basketball is different. They all, everybody touches the basketball. So you got to be the guy I played for. He used to always say, you know, you got to be Jekyll and Hyde. You got to be tough as nails on defense and you got to be loose on offense. So you got to have that kind of balance. Well, as a coach, when things don't go your way, you know, you know, you got to fix it. You got to be, and sometimes you're doing good things, you're just not getting the result. And then sometimes you're not. Like for us, just don't, don't turn the basketball over. So we dive into that. We dive into how we got there. And then we make sure it's like being upset, you know, about the officiating with Zach. Well, that didn't lose the game for us. The turnovers did. So, like, keep that in perspective. Like, don't, like, even though you're upset about those things and they should have been better. But last time I checked, we got mirrors at home. You know, we should have been better. And I should be better. And so, like, we got to get them in the right frame of mind when we're valuing the basketball, but not losing our aggressiveness. A lot of, we, can, we can go down there and not turn it over, but then you're going to be passive and, you know, playing on your heels. And that's not what you want. You want to be aggressive. You want to be attacking. But you also got to kind of, you know, know when to be aggressive and know when to move the basketball. Maryland has had a lot of success since uh, kind of a mid-season slump. How different do you think this team is maybe since the last time you faced them? Why? They've been one of the best teams in the country at home. So UCLA beat them in non-conference, and then nobody in conference has beat them. So I think they're tough as nails. They are, we barely beat them on our home court. So I think that speaks for itself. And he's a really good coach, a uh, tough-minded coach, you know, if you watched his teams at Seton Hall, I mean, they were always coming at you, and that's the way this team is at Maryland. Um, they got the interchangeable pieces that you talk about. Reese has really made improvements. The addition of Jameer Young has really helped them. You know, he's one of the best guards in our league. And, um, you know, I think that piece of having good players and then also having a good home court environment. You know, they, they've done a good job there, and they've always had a really good home court environment. So um, it's going to be a tough game. Kind of a random question, but Waddell, Martin, Barrett, these are names of guys that you played with. How meaningful is it for you to now you're coaching their sons? Yeah, it's cool. Well, they obviously they want them to get a degree at Purdue, and obviously they had you know positive experiences playing you know in this program. So yeah, to have you know guys that I played with, you know kids that are here, it's it's sometimes it's a little surreal, especially when they do something that kind of mocks. Or kind of act a certain way, like like the dad did. Hopefully so, on the court, no. Oh, yeah, 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 a little bit of both, a little bit of both. But no, they're all three good dudes, man. They're, they're all, they've been great things for our program. Uh, 